All right, I um, got it. As the proud sister of Tupac Amaro Shakur, the daughter of Matulu and Afeni Shakur, it fills my heart with honor to stand here today representing the Shakur family. Tupac knew deep down that he was always meant for something great. And as his little sister, I had the privilege to watch that greatness unfold. Okay. <laughs> From the first time he stepped foot on the stage of the Apollo Theater at 13 years old, before anyone recognized his name, he knew he had the dream to have a star here on the Walk of Fame. And now we gather here today to unveil Tupac's star, not only paying tribute to his contribution in the music industry, but also to speak volumes to the lasting impact he's had on this world. Today we not Today we're not just honoring a star on the ground, but we're honoring the work and the passion that he has put into making his dreams come true. His heavenly star will shine a little brighter today. And once again, he has made us all extremely proud. We love you, Tupac. But seeing your son playing playing park how hard was that was that a tough was that tough for you to see your your best friend being portrayed by your son dude I, uh when we recreated that scene where he gets killed it wasn't a dry eye on set To get that far, <clears throat> shit, and um, two black males, dog, like, he was like my brother. That's what it felt like, because we made our bones at the same time. People don't understand. They don't get the juice part. Everybody's talking about toss it up. Me and dude partied in Miami. Me, him, and Tretch partied in Miami at a little Skywalker party, you know? Like, we were already cool behind the scenes before we worked together because we worked on the same, you know, because of that project. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> I'm callous. I've had to look at a lot of my friends in cas caskets. Initially, when Pac got killed, I just was angry. But the movie, it just brought it to life. I really got the chance to see what he was dealing with. The education of knowing, you know, because we talked on his way to Vegas. And Joelle tells a story where we begged him not to go. She woke up. We were in the studio. And it's funny you said Nate. Because Nate was there. I was there. Eric B. was there. Hammond was there. And um, 
Pac called and we was trying to get him on the song. Like he was supposed to do his record. Not trying to get him, but he was supposed to get on Three Wishes for Jewel. And she woke up from a dead sleep and she's like, I had a dream that Pac got killed him. Like he didn't, he not, he didn't make it. And so when he called me, we called, I don't know, we called or he called me. I think we called him. She wanted to talk to him. And so we got him on the phone and he's like, Meech, why you ain't out here with us? Why you ain't going with us? And I'm like, hold on, man. I'm, uh, you know, like Joel want to talk to you. And I'm like, she want to tell you something. Like, and so she's telling him. And this voice like, don't go, don't go. And but she's more like mad, like, come get on my record. I'm in the studio oh. now. Come get on my record. Like, you not gonna do it. And he like, Jewel, I'm gonna do the record as soon as I get back. And she told, she kept saying, I had a I had a dream, like I had I had this dream that you got killed. And he didn't want to hear no more. He's like, man, put Meech on the phone. Put me back on the phone. He's like, man, she been drinking with us. And I was like, no. Nah. He's like, man, what's up with you, Will? I'm like, and so he said, well, what is she talking about? He's like, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't think it was right. I'm like, what made you put yourself on the cross? And, he's, and he clearly said, I want my people to know I would die for them. And it just, that just didn't sit well with me, man. I just know you can't, certain stuff you just don't, I don't want to say play with certain mm -hmm. things, you know, the the power of life and death is in the tongue, oh, right? Yeah. I understood that being raised in the church. I understood that because of where I was at, because I had said in my cell, I'm going to be, my name will be remembered. You know, like, I didn't want to die a no name. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, people don't have a reason to think about you or it just never comes up. You know, like, you're just forgotten. Like, so many of my homeboys who, you know, your name is on the wall for a while and then after that, you know, the next generation comes and, you know, nobody talks about you as much. I've seen that. So I didn't want, I didn't want that for myself. And, um, so me and him, this is our last conversation. And I'm like, why did you do that? Like, and I said, why do you feel like you need to die? Why can't you live for your people? We need you to live for us, dog. Not die for us. And um basically it was like, when I get back, I'm gonna do the record. It's gonna be dope. And you know, we're gonna finish doing what we what we what we what we planned on doing. And he came out. I think they played the record at the fight, tossed it up. And that was dope. And by that night, man, it was over. Wow. And I woke up, got a phone call. And it was just like, Damn, I did all this work to get to this pinnacle just for the artist to get killed. Like, damn, like, why, how, how is this happening? And so I'm like, do I not do music? Do I, you know, what do I do? Like, what do you do from there when you, your intentions were good? And we set out, all of us are living good. You know what I mean? Like, Money wasn't no problem. That wasn't no issue, you know? We're living, you know, an inside lane lifestyle. We got carte blanche on everything, you know what I mean? It's VIP, red carpet, and, you know, special interests, you know? Mm. And then that happens, and you, it just brings it all back full circle. Like, that wasn't worth it. So for my son... When when I went and met with LT, my brother, and they kept it real about, you know, he told me, you know, that you know, he saw the likeness in Lil' Meech and, uh -oh, you know, that we knew that he could possibly do it. But when we were on set that day, bro, 
That was the first time I grieved. Wow. I hadn't shed a tear until my son was there. And it was so eerie because, bro, those guns, I checked those guns in those blanks. You know what I mean? Before those scenes. And I, I stayed with them all the way throughout because it was just that eerie. Like, you just felt like anything can happen. You just felt like it was just so such a dark cloud and such like a mystery of this energy. When we got to that scene, it was just like when they had that meeting and uh shout out to the homie, um, who was one of the ones who did it, uh, Mano. And he'll tell you, I checked those guns and I made sure I damn near want to pat him down and make sure he didn't, they didn't have no more, you know, anything else. But I was, it was crucial, man. It was hard. And when my son was laying out there, I was crying. Not only did I see Tupac die, but I saw my son die. So, yeah, it was hard. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Halftime Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member as a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind the scenes stuff and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat.